Hi, and welcome to this episode of Our Road to Camelot. In this episode, we're going to be covering the top must-have items for those that are going to be starting the RV lifestyle. Whether you are a beginner or a seasoned RVer and going out for that new rig, these are things that you need to make sure that you have on board before you hit the road. So I broke this down into four different areas. One is the general campsite, things you need for that, and then the three major hookups, your water hookup, your sewer hookup, and your electrical hookup. So let's go ahead and start breaking it down in order that I have on my list. One extra disclaimer, I just want to let you know that in the comments below I have a lot of information on all the items that I'll be showing you. What I'll be showing you is what we are currently using. Uh, some of the items are going to be upgrading, and uh, some of them we went ahead and bought the right thing at the beginning because of the cost. Uh, certain things you don't want to scrimp on right away. So let's go ahead and jump on into it and um, move on around and see what we have to show you. The first item on the list are the wheel chocks. I picked mine up at Harbor Freight, a set of four basically 20 bucks pretty easy way to go uh, there's another updated wheel chalk I'm going to be getting uh, that I've mentioned in my uh, information that's the X chalks and I'll have a picture of those uh, but this is something that when we were first getting started we needed to get into this um, on a budget we had a lot of things that we were already dealing with and already purchasing so we decided that we we're going to save money in a few areas the chocks were one we just need something that's going to block the tires from rolling so uh, the harbor freight chocks are working out just fine okay the next area would be locking up the kingpin so no one can drive away with your rig and i went with a very simple model from uh this deadbolt locks company and uh they basically are a very simple locking mechanism um, that goes on the uh, kingpin, so no one can walk off with that. Now the fact that I have a tonneau cover on the truck, I did not necessarily need to lock up the fifth wheel hitch uh, receiver, but I do have a standard hitch on the back and that I have locked up with this mechanism right here that basically keeps somebody from not being able to run off with my trailer hitch. Now I know there's some people maybe thinking, who does that? Well, it uh, wasn't that long ago, a local RV dealership here in town where I'm staying had a couple of their brand new rigs um, taken right off the lot. Somebody came in with their with the truck, hitched up, pulled it out, and uh, I was in the middle of the night, broke the lock to the to the gate, and came in and stole a couple of rigs. So it does happen, uh, and it's probably easier at an RV campsite than it would be taking it right off the brand new lot, and if they're so bold to do that, I don't want to take a chance of losing everything because I didn't take proper precaution. Okay, the next thing we're gonna be talking about is stabilizer pads. Now. I am fortunate to have automatic hydraulic uh, levelers on this rig. So basically all I did was pick up these uh, plastic pads that uh, give the stabilizers something to uh, rest on. If I was in a parking lot or in hard concrete, I would not want the stabilizers resting on that. It could damage the concrete could damage the asphalt, could even damage the bottom of the pads. So this way we can uh, set up and protect things all the way around, especially if you are boondocking at some point and you want to drop your um, your stabilizers uh, just for the night so you're not rocking all over the place to give a little bit added secure, uh, stability. Um, it is much nicer and they like it if you protect their uh, if you protect their parking lot by putting these things down. Now, if you have a trailer, you may need a ramp of some sort. I do have a description of some ramps in the comments below. 
So if you do need to go for ramps, you can uh, definitely do that. I don't have anyone around here that I can go check on to see what they're using because most of the people I know right now where I'm at have the levelers like mine. But there's a number of different ramps you can use to drive your rig up on. But you will need this because the last thing you want to do is be camping in a very uneven, unlevel site. So that's it for the basic setup. Let's move on to sewer. Now, there are a number of things for sewer that you really need to make sure that you pick up the right thing right away. Number one is the hose. So we, we got the Rhino set up here and it came with the hose. It came with all the connectors and the elbow. The nice thing about this is that uh, you, you can actually bend it, move it, squeeze it together, spread it apart, and it will always keep its shape. I have a fairly long run. This is the first time we've had to use the entire hose since we've been camping. Usually I only use half, a 10 foot section. But in this case, our connection is all the way to the back. Uh, very durable material. And the connection that goes into the ground uh, actually threads in. So uh, I won't pull that out right now to show you, but it does thread into just about any sewer connection. The nice thing about having it clear is a lot of times, you know, people get a little grossed out about it because when you're dumping the black tank. But the nice thing is, is when you are flushing the black tank, which I tend to do as often as I can, I tend to do just about every time that I dump the black tank, you can keep flushing until you see it becomes clear. Then you know you got everything out. Uh, otherwise, you may think that you've flushed it and if you don't have a clear elbow, you're not gonna know that. Now, the sewer hose support, let's turn around this way again. The sewer hose support is actually, uh, the one we have is really nice. It's a, a newer model. It works perfectly with this hose. Um, We'll take a look again. It does not bunch up on you. Some of the cheaper ones will collapse all by themselves. You need special little rubber straps to hold them in. This one, the hose sets right down inside. And you can basically set this out, lengthen it out any way you want. Uh, so it actually works really well in holding the hose. And it does not collapse on you. Now, our... RV actually has a black water tank connector. Okay, the nozzle right there behind the water filter is actually the black tank flush. That allows us to hook up a city to city water and run a hose to that and it will flush out the black tank. Um, but if you don't have that, you're going to want to make sure that you have some sort of a wand. I have a description down below in the uh, comments. And you get a chance to see what it looks like. It basically, you run the hose into your rig, run it down the toilet, and it will help flush out that black tank. Now I'm coming to you live from our bathroom. Um, this is uh, the next step that you need to make sure you've got, and that is septic safe toilet paper. We go with Angel Soft and Septic Safe. Um, a lot of people think you need to use actual RV toilet paper. It's a lot more expensive. Um, and to be honest, Septic Safe has worked great. I'll do a product review on that at some point just to kind of show you there's nothing to worry about. It breaks down really well in water and you have no trouble having it dissolve within your tank. It does not build up. So as long as you get some sort of a Septic Safe, that is also RV safe toilet paper, you should be perfectly fine with that. Okay, the chemicals we're using right at the moment is this porta pack. Um, why? <laughs> it's available at Walmart. It's easy, it's very, uh, very easy to use. You just drop the pack in, let it start to dissolve, and then flush it on down. It definitely keeps the odors out. We haven't had any problem with uh, bathroom odor. And it's been pretty reliable, to be honest. So, uh, but truthfully, if we're to Walmart and they have a different brand and this one's not there, we'll, we'll get it. So, just something that will keep the odor down and help break down the black waste. Okay, uh, fresh water systems. Let's get to that. With a fresh water system, there's a number of things you definitely need. One. You need a special water 
uh, a drinking water hose specifically for your water system. So the water hose that we have here is specifically for drinking water. It's uh, clean, it's pure. On the other end of the hose, in fact, we just recently bought a new hose because this had to run such a long length. This is the first time we had to do that. But we've got a drinking hose that comes up and you're gonna want some sort of filtration system. We're using the Taste Pure uh, exterior um, water filters. It comes with this flex hose. Uh, if you just buy the replacement filters and don't buy one with that flex hose, you're gonna wanna need that. That protects your um, connectors going into the rig. So that's another thing you'll need is that flex hose. Uh, sometimes though, when you buy just the one water filter by itself, it will come with that. Uh, we've since replaced the filter and we just got a replacement pack. Did not come with the hose. So we just got a couple of those uh, filters instead. Another thing you're gonna need is a water pressure regulator. Now at this particular RV resort, uh, their water pressure is very seriously regulated. So we wound up taking it off because they had their own built in. Uh, in fact, we'll take a look at that again. So when I had my water pressure regulator and their water pressure regulator, we weren't getting any water out. We basically were taking a trickle shower, just a little bit of water coming out and that's it. All right, I'm gonna interrupt the video for just a brief moment to talk a little bit more about a water pressure regulator. The reason why you do need that, because some campgrounds have very high pressure coming through their lines and it can actually cause a lot of damage to your RV's water system. Uh, the last thing you want is to have leaks start forming because the water you're pumping into your rig is way too much for what the rig is designed for. Uh, the other thing too that I wanted to bring up is the water regulator that I would prefer that I'm actually ordering. I don't have it yet but I'm ordering it now. Uh, actually has a uh, a dial on it to let you know how much pressure is coming through and it has uh, a way of dialing in uh, different levels of pressure so if you uh, have low pressure you can open it up to where it's allowing more water through or if you do have a high pressure situation you can dial it back down and allow you to uh, restrict that flow a little bit better so it gives you more control over your water pressure coming into the rig. One more thing you may have noticed too is we do have a Y splitter that I hook up to the water. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, if we were at a site where it did not have more than one spigot for our site, we can run a second hose off of the other split. Also, if I was to shut the water off and then go unhook from the rig, I'd be drenched with water. This way I can shut the water off and then flip this and let the pressure out of the hose first. Now if I go and unhook, I am not gonna have water spraying all over me. One last thing you're gonna need for your water system, <clears throat> and that is you are gonna need a standard water hose. Um, any garden hose would do. We personally like this collapsible hose. Um, it, when you hook it up, it basically expands out to about two to three times its actual length. So you've got a nice long hose, it packs up really tight, and it's also very light. So, uh, but any garden hose would work, but this is the one is our preference, especially for traveling full time, it does not take up much space, but it gives you a pretty long hose. Finally, to our last system is our electrical system. Most RVs are gonna come with their own power cord. Ours has, um, not super long, but a long enough uh, power cord plugs into the back of the rig and we have it connected to a circuit analyzer and surge suppressor. We are running 50 amps at this site. So um, the first thing we would do, in fact, I'll probably do another one with that. We, we always want to check to make sure we've got um, good electricity coming out before we hook up. Uh, notice I also do have a bicycle lock because uh, these things are not cheap and they tend to disappear. It's not a regular thing, but they do disappear from time to time. And 
So I keep mine locked up so no one can walk off with it. Uh, but this, once you test your power, then you'll go ahead and plug your electricity into the circuit. Now, oftentimes, you're at a place that may only have uh, 30 amp, and if you have a 50 amp unit, you're gonna need some adapters. So we have a number of adapters that I carry with us. So we have stayed at a number of places where we've had only a 30 amp service. So for that, I've got a basic dog bone on one end. I can plug that into the extension cord of the rig. And on the other end, we have our 30 amp plug. So this has come in handy. Now, basically what would happen is this would plug into the surge suppressor and this would plug into the actual service. If we find ourselves plugging into a family member's house, they have a standard 15 amp service. So I also have another dog bone that goes from 30 amp to 15. So by plugging these adapters in together, I can pretty much plug into anything from 15, 30 to, um, to 50 amps. Now, the thing is there is a, an adapter out. If you are at a place that only has like say 15 amp and 30 amp, there's another adapter that you could get. I don't have that one yet that actually is 50 amp, but you have two plugs coming out that would go into the 15 amp and the 30 that would actually give you 45 amps. That would allow you to run a lot more things because you're pulling power out of two different circuits. So that's basically it for electrical. So that's it for this episode. We basically covered all those basic items that you definitely need to have for that first RV trip. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We're going to be uh, covering more things like this in the future. Along with stay tuned, we're going to be taking a look at the Sunflower Resort where we're at right now. Um, but in the meantime, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, I've had some people that were a little confused about subscription. I don't send you anything. When you subscribe, all that does is let you find it faster and easier. And it tells YouTube, hey, these guys are really good. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Also make sure that you hit the notification bell. Now the notification bell will let you know every time we post, which is you'll only get one notification every week at two o'clock on Sunday to let you know that we have a new video out there waiting for you. Uh, until then, we will catch you on the road and see you in the next video. Okay, I broke this down into four major categories. Man, somebody's talking really loud over there. That's my neighbor. kind of come to the conclusion, this is quite a noisy park. Somebody sawing away across the way here. Neighbor talking really loud to another neighbor. Okay, let's see what happens. Holy cow. Somebody's sawing over there. Nice, okay. He stopped, I started recording, he turned it on again. Okay, let's see if I can get through this. Move on around and see what we have to show you.